In this video, I'm going to run through how you can find the derivative of x sine x from first principles. So let's start by defining first principles. Now, we need to get f of x plus h, and we need f of x. Obviously, f of x is just going to be what we're interested in. And now to get f of x plus h, we just replace our x's with x plus h. And that gives us the formula there. So we've now got the two functions we need to complete the substitution. So we can substitute those two expressions into our first principles formula. And that gives us an expression for the derivative. And we can't simply immediately go and take our limits because if we take the limit as h goes to 0, we're going to have a divide by 0 situation, and that's just not going to work. So what we're going to have to do is play around with this expression to get something nicer that we can actually take limits of. And the first step is to multiply this out. So we'll do x times this expression plus h times this expression. And when we do that, we're going to end up with this expression here. And you may notice that you've got an h here and you've got an h here. And so there is an opportunity to do a cancellation. So if I split this up into two different limits and deliberately put this together, I'm going to get this expression here. And you should notice that this h and this h are going to cancel out. So they're going to be gone. So I can get rid of those and rewrite it without the h's. And so we can see we've got one limit here that's going to be very, very easy to take. Because when h goes to 0, that h is simply going to disappear and you're going to be left with sine x. And so we've done half of the problem in a sense. We've done one of the limits. So the only limit we need to worry about is this one here. So if we move on and start focusing on this expression. So we're going to play around with this. And the first thing to spot is that x and x here can be taken out. So we can take a common factor of x. So if I take a common factor here, we've simplified this a little bit. Now we've got sine x plus h, and we can split this up by using our famous formula that sine a plus b is sine a cos b cos a sine b. And so if we let x be our a and h be our b, we can take this expression, substituting x and h into it, we can now expand this out and we end up with this expression here. This is actually going to be easier because it's going to let us divide this up in a way that's going to be very convenient. So I'm going to take some deliberate factors out, and I'll explain why I've done this. So I'm taking a sine x out first when I split it into two limits. And that leaves us with cos h minus 1 over h. And then whatever's left is going to end up here. Now I'm going to take something else out, um, or rather rewrite this with moving things outside the limit. So I'm taking the sine x out outside the limit and taking this cosine x outside the limit. And I've done this for a very deliberate reason, because these are very easy limits to take with L'Hopital's rule. So this one here is simply going to be 0, because when we take the derivative of top and bottom, this cos is going to become a sine. And so you're going to be doing sine of 0, so that's going to end up with 0. And then when you do the same thing here, you're going to get a cosine when you take the derivative. That's just going to be 1. And so you're going to end up with 1. So in fact, all of this is gone, and so you just have x times cos x. So you get x cos x here. So this is this whole limit dealt with. So we come across here. This whole thing here can be replaced with x cos x, and then we just add the sine x, and we've got our final answer. So you can now find the derivative of x sine x from first principles. I hope this video was helpful to you, and thank you very much for watching.